In the last section of the class, we spoke about this personally, and it was so easy for people to come up with examples of how when they truly turned it over to God, gave God what was difficult, or did what they were doing knowing, I can't do this, God, it's all about you. And then they saw, truly, truly is. Anyone experienced this? Giving Hashem what they felt was so impossible, so difficult, and, and seeing, perhaps seeing the results, seeing the blessings, seeing the protection. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have. Uh, I'll put up my camera. I have. Um, I once, a few times I've needed something, and I always say, like, when it happens, Bezat Hashem, I'll give, like, a larger amount than what I would usually give to Tzedakah. And I was like, why am I giving the money before? I should be giving the money, I mean, the money after I should give it before. So I gave a larger than what I would usually give amount of money to Tzedakah for something. And then something happened and it was good. And then I gave more Tzedakah. So I think that's... that's. Did you find it challenging to give the money before? No, but the larger amount, yes. I don't usually give like... Uh, it's a, it's a amount. It was a mount that was challenging for you. I don't want to say it was. It w it was a bigger stretch. It, was it, was, it wasn't within your normal yeah. amounts of giving stuff. Though. It was a stretch. Right. Maybe you didn't yes. tell your husband about it. Yes. <laughs> exactly. But I I still did, and these good things came. So. Yeah. Aliza, what were you going to share? Um, something along the same lines, but not. Yes, Sadaka more than I ever thought that I could, but um, totally different. Th there was um, a number of years back, I was in a situation where I um, didn't think that I was able to make a connection with a particular child that I was supposed to work with. And not because the child wasn't adorable, not because the child wasn't a Yiddish and a Shama, not be. I, I simply, the language, the, the child came from a different language home, has a language processing challenge, and was all over the place in their behaviors in, in the classroom. I came in and the classroom was Yiddish speaking. The child did not speak Yiddish. And my Yiddish, I'm better understanding than speaking. But in the meantime, I didn't speak Bukharian, and this Bukharian child is in this Yiddish speaking classroom. And I just remember thinking, what am I supposed to do? Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And then I thought, you know what? And and I actually recalled a story that I, I don't remember um, who shared the story, I, or I, it would be my pleasure to give the credit. But apparently, there was someone who was um, going off in Shlichus, and they went to the Rebbe, and they said, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm not a good speaker. I have no charisma. I'm not well spoken. I'm not learned. I don't know how to go raise funds. I don't. And they listed all of what they thought were their, their chasronos. And the rabbi apparently said, You're the perfect shaliach because you'll know it's not you. You'll know it's all a Kaddish Barakul. And they went on to build a gorgeous Chabad. And, um, you said, "Gay, well, this isn't me. I don't barely. I don't speak Yiddish, and I don't speak Bukhari. Right. This is totally you, God." Exactly. Exactly. And and like English is not going to go over in the classroom. And I was supposed to teach this Bukharian child with language processing challenges Yiddish when that's not my. I don't speak the Queen's Yiddish, let alone you know. Like, so I thought, "Hakadosh Baruch Hu, you put me in this situation. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I know that He's your child, and I'm your child." So I'm just going to love your child and, and you just do whatever you need to do. And Bar Hashem, it, it was like this child felt my love. So he connected and attached to me. It had nothing to do with any words on my part, nothing to do with any language. He just felt the love. His mother felt it. His mother had English. Not, not so aye, 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 but she had English bit. to let me know. And, and in the meantime, and the, the teachers in the classroom barely tolerated the child. They had their prejudice, I believe, in terms of cultural, whatever. And uh, the whole placement was just a very strange thing. But in the meantime, Akadosh Baruch Hu 
somehow anything I wanted to say to him, I was able to string together and conjugate in Yiddish appropriately. Like I, I, I'm able to hear if something is grammatically correct or incorrect. And, but sometimes they just can't get it out. Here, it was like Hashem gave me the words, but he also gave me just even extra love. And, and, and I just showed more than I spoke. And Baruch Hashem, the child's behavior came under control. And, and then, just as I thought that this child needs more than I can give, I'm only with him for this amount of time, but he's in this classroom for this amount of time. And, and he looks at me like, like a, a life vest, you know, like he's drowning in a sea. And just as I thought, please, I just, I'm loving your child. But the teachers are also resentful of me. They're not understanding that he only gets this amount of time and I'm not supposed to be there more. And then his classroom was switched. Hmm. And wow. So like, it, it was like, one Over. thing after another, but it had Over. nothing to do with me. And Over. it was by just saying, Akadosh Baruch Hu, your child, your okay. situation. So that's, that's your example of Bittal. So yeah, El's example of the difficulty in the Bittal is making that much larger commitment than normal and also doing it before, which I agree with you, yeah, El. I, I do think that's exactly the time to do it before. And uh, Eliza, you're giving this amazing example of, of Bittal. That's an amazing, amazing example of Bittal in a, in a very, very, very different way, not in a, in a specific mitzvah per se, but in, in, in your whole interaction with this child and your whole interaction with your, your shlichus in this world, you know, you, you in this world is there for this child and your total nullification to Hashem. Okay, Hashem, it's you and I'm letting you flow through me. And I think that's that's such a deep Bittal. So you could definitely, you said, can you, 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 you know, you're giving yourself a tremendous you know, like, like, yeah, you've done it. You can remember doing it and then knowing what it feels like. And it's definitely, I think when we're in a situation, when we know we can't handle it, it might in a sense be easier or not, but it's definitely like, hey okay, God, you're asking me something I can't do. Beautiful. I'll let you work through me. And I've definitely, both situations, meaning sometimes I think it's like the mitzvah, the mitzvah that's hard for me mitzvah that's challenging the mitzvah that's pushing me and it's like okay Hashem this is really difficult I'm so excited because you're going to be so revealed in my life through this very difficult mitzvah that I'm doing for you or like you know in Elisa's example this situation is very difficult this situation is beyond my ability great Hashem I know it's always you but sometimes I can forget here I can't forget <laughs> here we're stripping away the disguise here is you're going to obviously be working through me because I definitely can't do this one. So I'm glad. And I trust that every single person really has gone through this sometimes or many times when we tackle the difficult or tackle the impossible, tackle the difficult meaning committing to the mitzvah that we find very difficult or tackle the difficult when we're in a situation that we know we can't handle this situation. Either or both of those situ examples is like, Hashem, this is about you. And when I know Hashem, this is about you, it's just broadening those channels for Hashem's energy to flow through, flow through, flow through. And it's and it's actually a very beautiful feeling as I, as I think you know, in both of the examples, in Yael's example and in Elise's example, I think you can feel that it was, it's very beautiful. It's very cool. It's very amazing. And in very different examples, you both had that so cool, so amazing. It really works. You really, when you do the difficult, when you give it over to Hashem, when you know it's all Him, and then it really works and you really see His energy making it happen. It's like, wow, that's unbelievable. And we always, have that ability we always have that ability we can always bring Hashem big time into our life as we nullify ourselves as we do what we really won't want to do what he wants us to do we always have the ability to bring him in it's an amazing 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 gift and 
when this happens, there's just such a natural organic joy. There's a very tremendous relationship between nullification and joy. Because the more we work on nullification, the more we feel we're in God's space, as in both of the examples we just heard. And the more you feel you're in his space, the more you feel joy that you're with Hashem. When we're adding, or when we're doing the difficult, or when we're recognizing that we can't do this and only God can, it feels so good. It's a big stretch. And we have a, a, a very big lift, a very big joy that we have specifically from this very, very, very big stretch. You know, it's interesting because it's so tangible. It's so clear. The examples were so easy to come up with. When we do it Hashem's way, it works. Life works. God's energy shines through. And still, we can fight it. We can get lazy. We don't want to give God so much. And at the same time, we know this is the source of all of our blessings, all of our spiritual blessings, all of our physical blessings. So it's good, it's good to remember that. When I'm looking at what I don't want to do that God wants me to do, it's good to remember all this. To, to win the battle of, I'm too tired, I'm too lazy, I can't be bothered. It's, it says about the mincha prayer. You know, the mincha prayer is the shortest prayer. Obviously much shorter than Shachar's and also shorter than Ma'arit. But it says that the mincha prayer has a special shine, a special energy. Because it's in the middle of the day. And you're stopping to give God time in the middle of the day. That's difficult. Very short. But it's hard to step aside from your life and, and give God time. And that's its power. So literally, when we want Hashem in our life, give him what you don't want to give. And the more you give him what you don't want to give, the more he can be fully revealed in your life with all the blessings, with all the salvations, with everything we want shining in our world. And we, like man-made miracle, we created it by our nullification. And the more by it becomes a Giving God easier. what we didn't want to. I'm sorry, what did you say? No, I said, I'm sorry. Uh, no, and also it becomes a little bit easier each time you do it. It does. It absolutely does. And I, I was going to say that. So thank you, Miriam, for adding that very, very important point. And I, I've experienced that so many times that like, I'm looking at something, I'm like, oh, this is going to be really difficult. Oh, this will be really difficult. And then like, I like gear myself up and I commit to it and I do it. And then I'm like, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> you know? I, I thought that was going to be harder. I thought that was going to be more difficult. And definitely, even if it is difficult in the beginning, as we get used to it, it just becomes more and more natural, especially like, like anything, like really not allowing yourself to gossip or really committing to honesty or really committing to modesty. Like after a while, you get used to it. And it, it does definitely get easier, but that doesn't take away the nullification because that's the only reason I'm doing it. And that nullification brings Hashem in and brings the blessings in and bring the salvation in. Eliza? So when I think about so many different times in my life where yes, I really did say, okay, Hashem, it's all you that I, I can't do anything. I did what I thought that I could do or what I didn't even think I could do, but I did. I find it easier where it's for the sake of someone else, like this child, or I can think of a myriad of other examples where it's for the sake of someone who I'm doing something for. When, when it's not for, like I, I dive in better for other people than for myself. How do I do that for myself? I think there are many people like that and many people not like that. I think when it's about someone else, we, you know, all of our nurturing instincts, all of our wanting, you know, helicopter saving others comes out. And sometimes for ourselves, we, eh, okay, so I don't have it, all right, it's okay. We, we, we make excuses. For someone else, we're not gonna make excuses. And we're not supposed to make excuses. And we are, you know, in other words, if you're going through something hard, well, you're supposed to analyze your deeds, you're supposed to introspect, you're supposed to 
If someone else is going through something hard, you're just supposed to bang on God's door and say, God, why are you doing this? Why aren't you helping this person? So it makes perfect sense in, in a good Jewish value system sense that when someone else has a need, of course, everything comes so natural to us. And when it's our own need, you know, whatever, we, we, yeah. Hey, I, 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 that makes perfect sense. And, but what again to do is remember it worked so well when I did it in that situation, it's going to work the same when I do it now. And I really, I really do feel that the more we pull on the resources of what we've personally experienced and how we've personally seen this, the more we can keep moving in this direction. So we're going to stop at this point and hopefully, you know, a lot of different things we said here about nullification. This is the work of this week. The whole world spiritually is being washed in these waters, 22 feet higher than the highest mountains. So this is the week of nullification. Doesn't mean you can't be nullified next week or last week or next month. But this is the week of Noah. This is the week of the flood. This is the week when the world is in the mikvah. Mikvah, Tibul, Bitul, this is the week of nullification. So we hopefully, from all the different things we said tonight, and of course there's far more to say than we said, but to find something that you could put a handle on, something that's concrete in your world, and go with it to bring more nullification to your life, to bring more opportunity for God to be revealed in your life, and for the blessings to be flooding your world. Thank you so much for joining. I know it's hard right after the holidays and hopefully we all should have a great utilization of all the energies we got as we move forward back into schedule, but with very, very rich baggage from everything we took from this whole month of holidays. Thank, thank you so you. much for joining. Mean, Feel good. Thank you. Feel good. Thank you.